Hello, this is Guys7, and today we are going to be editing some more advanced edit objects for Super Mario 64 DS. We're talking warps, views, teleports, exits, etc, entrances too. So first thing you're going to need is the ROM you're going to hack, and Super Mario 64 DSE, and two other tools. My own tool for... First, you're going to download alwaysontop.exe and the release for your version of Windows or Linux. If you have Mac, you're going to have to build it yourself, sorry. But basically, you are going to take these two files when they're finished downloading. Now, let's see here, always on top, and... Uh, Look for it, probably passed it, didn't I? Anyways, once you got your two files, you're going to extract this archive or the version you downloaded. In, or in order to run it, you're going to need Java 8 installed. And this kind of looks like a weird tool, but it will help you a lot. I also recommend alwaysontop.exe too. And now what that does is if I hit control space, if I click anywhere else on the screen, this window will never go away. But if I hit control space again, it'll go away. So let me just control space it and run the DS editor. Now let's go to our classic Bob on Battlefield with the help of our parameter tool here. And first off, let's start off by making, I don't know, a warp pipe that leads to no, not a warp pipe, a painting. Let's make a painting that leads to Wump's Fortress for whatever reason. So first we're going to add a new paint object. We're going to hit painting. Then let's just set the painting values. Like first one is the, ooh, that's a little too big. Okay, let's keep it like that. And that, let's move it a little back. And there we go, we got our painting. And now you need to use this tool to generate the exit. So let's go ahead and first place the exit we're going to use. We'll set the destination to Wump's Fortress, entrance ID 0. And first, let's copy the X and Y's. You must have the X and Y's of this the same. Otherwise, it, the entrance will be, or exit will not be placed correctly. Because it's not the painting that actually makes you go to the level. It's this exit object here. Now see, we have the exit object. And so now let's use this for reference. These two are, this is the width and this is the height. So well, you can just use the mouse and go down to make it higher or up, or you can click on it and type the number you want. There you go. So the size, depth, and trends ID. Let's make it go to the last level you entered for simplicity. And off is for like on the wall, on for the floor. It's on the wall, so we'll keep it off. So here are the parameters here, 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, F, F. So basically what we would do here is go into warp and see that parameter. We just do this. 
Oh, and yeah, we must make it so the painting would work. And let me just for the sake remove King Baba. Because he'll be in the way. Now we can save the level without it crashing. As many times we want. Okay, so now we got the painting. Which is good. Now let's see if it works in game. And now we're in the level, so let's enter it. And we have a painting right there. Now let's see if it works. You can see it does not work. And the reason for that is, is sometimes you might place a painting too close to the wall. Like, see how close to the wall that is? That's too close to the wall, and so the player can't enter it. So now let's move the painting a little to make it so the player can enter it. Like, make it move more that way. Let me just copy these properties real quick and now when we try and enter the painting it will work and now the painting should work correctly Yep, sometimes you need to move it even further back in order for the character to get in it like they should. And now this time it will work. If you don't want to move the painting, you can always just move the exit. Okay, now this doesn't make sense. And after a while playing around with the exit position, you'll eventually get it to work. And see, we can we're entering the Womp's fortress like usual. Now we're just like that, we're in the Womp's fortress. And now, with that being done, let's go into our next type of warp, our teleport sources, or destinations. But before we go into that, I'm going to quickly cover another type of ground warp exit, the ground exit. Now, I'm not going to show you how it looks in game, but basically, you take a painting... And, for example, you're, you could take this, and you can size it however you want. Like, say I just want a player to jump and land in that. You would click this button for it on to be on the floor. And I'll move this to 2, and that to 2, since the width and height are here are 2. And I'll just keep that on there for safety sandy reasons let me just add the exit it would be C and then 22 FF and then you would just copy the parameters from here and you would just put it in there
And a cool thing you can do here is if you wanted this warp to be kind of secret, like say you want the player to jump into, I don't know, a secret pit or something without them actually kind of seeing the painting, you can always remove the painting or whatever and the exit will still work how it should. But in the meantime, let's go over teleports. Now this already has a lot of teleport sources. And these 1 and 2's are undocumented, yet meaning no one knows what they mean. So let's just create our own teleportation. So let me use the, it's a pretty basic one, like if we make a new source and make a new destination over here for some reason. It's not that hard. Like this ID is zero. And if you see zero is just that. So basically if they're the first two on the list, you don't really need to do anything. But if we add an, another destination, I don't know, behind this pink bob -omb, in order to get there, we'll make a teleport source by that tree right there. In order to get there, this would be destination number one, so you would just put in one. And notice this only goes up to 15. That is because you could only have 15 teleport destinations. So you can't overuse them. And base, it's pretty basic. You just import this as parameter two. Now let's hit save and see how it looks in game. Okay, we're in bob on Battlefield, so let's stand by this pink bob -omb over here. And the first warp works correctly. Now let's make sure the one by the tree works. Another misconception is that you can enter teleport destinations. You actually cannot enter destinations. However, you can put a source there, like if I wanted you to be able to teleport behind them, I could always do something like this, and then you'd be able to do the two-way teleporter or whatever. But in the next object here, we have views. Now, views kind of go hand-in-hand -hand with... Uh, entrances so let me go to the castle one floor and we'll work something out okay I'm back in the castle one floor and now before we do handle the views and the entrances we're going to get into a pipe entrance let's say we want a pipe that leads into the level we're going to add a warp pipe And we're going to add an exit. We're going to make it leave to bob -Omb's Battlefield for simplicity. And you can see we have the parameters here, but hold on. It's important that we do the depth entrance ID if we're making things that go to a level. Like if we die in bob -Omb's Battlefield, we must have a place to go. And we'll worry about this entrance later, but we'll just keep this entrance. This is entrance number 19. So let me put in over here 19. And so we would set the parameters here to obviously the ones right here. And 1, 1, 1, 3. And now we're not done yet. It says, place an exit with the exact coordinates of the pipe. So we're going to do that. Make sure to get the rotation if needed too. Like, that's another thing for paintings. You can't forget rotations. 
those can make your things mess up. And now it says add 0 0.05 to the Y and Z values. So let's go copy this, go to calculator, or you can use google.com. And this doesn't seem to like my input, so let's just use Google plus 0 0.05. And it says to add that to the Z, the Y and Z, not the X. The X can be left alone. So we're going to put in this value for the Z plus 0, 0.05. Then we can copy this value and put it for the Z. I might have accidentally mix up the terms but basically do what it says add 0 0.05 to the y and z values and we already added the parameters from the tool and so we should be good for the pipe entrance the pipe should now work like any other pipe so let's go in game and see if the pipe will work and as you can see in the castle we have our pipe here and basically it works like any pipe if we go around it if the exit is placed properly we should not go inside it and basically once we jump inside it it'll work like a normal pipe but let's for but let's just die in this level real quick and you'll see something wrong with this pipe so let's just suicide ourselves to the goombas You know what, it might actually be a lot quicker to have the Chain Chomp kill us. And you'll see that we don't gain the health that we should be gaining back. Usually you like come out and you gain your missing health, but that does not happen. So let's go into the entrance ID thing here and actually make it so that can happen. And now let's set the correct properties to the entrance. So if we go to entrance, we're going to set it to something that allows the user to save. Basically, for now, we're going to do this. Even though it's not exactly correct, I haven't found enough documentation on the entrances. And hopefully, I'll make a more updated version where all these mysteries are converted to non-mysteries, so you know what they do. And you'll also see that it requires a view ID. Now a view ID is basically a view that you take. So let's add a view here. And this is how the camera will be when it looks through. So when you come out of this entrance, we're going to be looking from the cam perspective of this camera here. So let's move it back a little, back over here. Let's go to the views right here. And usually you want to do with standard camera. Now you could use the pause menu camera as well. Like in the game, the most commonly used values are 2, 7, and 0. As 2 being the standard. And 7 is when you pause the game, This will the 7 one will be the camera that you see, the, see when you pause the game. I can always provide an example if needed. But for now, let's just set this entrance up properly. Now, once again, view start at zero. This list is zero, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
view ID 11. So let's turn to view ID for, or 11. You'll see that we only have a limit of 15. So keep that in mind. And you also have a limit of 7 areas as well, but you shouldn't have to worry about areas too much. However, it is, in pl indoor places like this, it's good to keep in mind. Like the inside area and outside are 0 here, so basically keeping the area 0 should be good. Now we can see that the parameter 4 is 05d8, so let's plug that in, 05d8. You can always ignore whatever it says here because most likely it's going to be wrong. As you can tell, that's accurate, is not general, correct at all, as d does not equal 11 and the view ID is 11. And d is not 11 at all, b is 11, so you can see why you can't really trust that there. And now let me just place it above the pipe here. And now let's go kill ourselves in Super Mario 64. Another helpful tip is the blue line points to where the character will face. So let's make them face the camera when they come out of the level. So let's go ahead and test it. And now I'm back with Mr. Chainchomp here. And so let's use him to die. And let's see if our entrance works correctly. My tool, as long as you plugged in everything correctly, it should work. As my tool has a very high chance of working. And unless I messed up in the coding, it should work all correctly. And there we are. We acted just like we came out of painting. And the view ID was where we placed the camera. And as you can see, it didn't let us save, but it's only when we get the star that lets you save, just like any other painting. And now, the lastly, we're going to do a good example of the can't pause menu camera. Like, if we go through these views, you'll see that there's no FF07. I don't know what FF04 is. Like, for example, uh. Wait, yeah, I do. FF04 is rotation only, meaning they only rotate and these only translate. I don't know why you would want those though. So let's just add a pause menu camera. Basically, we'll do this, something like this, and FF07. I didn't really. Basically, this I haven't memorized by heart, but you guys may not, so you can always just use the tool as reference. So let's save it and launch up DS Mule. And if we hit the pause menu, you'll see it will do nothing. This is because the camera is not exactly meant for some levels such as the inside the castle walls. So even though we have the FF07 camera here, it's not always going to work correctly. And we never put the FF02 here like we should have, but it still seemed to work properly though. Although I would make sure you double check the warp parameters to make sure that everything is how it should be. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know I messed up a little, couple of times, but still, it's not do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. But basically, I hope you learned a lot. Like, we learned how to set up warp pipes to levels. We learned how to set up paintings, hidden ground and exits, and... We, we learned how to do teleports and views. Basically, it's much better than the other tutorial I have, as I had us look at some documentation instead of having this tool, which is kind of bad because for new users, it's hard to kind of understand how this hacking stuff works, but basically, 
this little tool here should help you through everything. So once again, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, and I'll see you all later.